Welcome to an NES, the Gale Force Budget Deck Tech. We are taking this deck and we're building it for only $50. Did you count those? Yep. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ. That makes us the Nippy King Nerds. We do deck techs, new commanders, old commanders, new strategies, weird decks, also budget stuff. If you like that, subscribe. Yeah, and besides, you want to be subscribed to our channel because our subscribers will have 10% more money in their pocket because they'll be playing budget decks. Disclaimer guy here. We can't control if you play budget or not or your money. Certainly sounds good to me. Wow, that was really fast. This claimer guy's going to have to talk really fast. He's going to have to. It's fine. <laughs> he works for us. Uh, so what are we actually doing, though? Uh, we So what we're doing is we're building a deck for $50. This includes everything besides basic lands. Those are those are free and abundant. The commander is like 6 bucks. That's included in the price. So really the deck's like $44. Yes. So we're using a TCG player market price. TCG, TCG player market price, not low. We're avoiding low because... It's weird doing low because sometimes there's like a card that's like a dollar listed for one cent because it went through a washing machine. I don't want to count that in my yeah. price. Yeah. This is like if you want cards that are in good shape, obviously you can get low cards if you want. So if you want to build the low version of this deck, it's probably like 12 bucks. Yeah. But, you know, the actual version is $50. Yes, exactly. So that's what we're doing. Market price under $50. Let's get into what this deck is. Uh, in as, what does it do? Three blue blue for a four four legendary Dijin with flying. Two an Azorius hybrid attacking creatures with flying get plus one plus one until end of turn. And this is the big one. Whenever three or more creatures you control with flying attack, each player gains control of a non-land permanent of your choice controlled by the player to their right. So we're going to be passing permanent around the table. We're going to give things away. We're going to have flyers because we care about flyers a lot in this deck. This ability essentially has haste uh because if you have three flyers in play then you cast your commander and attack with those three flyers you immediately get to use that ability yeah so the goal is make tokens expendable dumb things and now oh when we go to activate any of his ability everyone's passing something to the right but we choose every time so we give stuff away that's synergistic for them for the players we're not going to get take the best thing of the person that we are going to get something from and then give away something we don't care about at all also, this is not a target. You can't really do anything about it. Uh, so even if you have a sack outlet and they choose a card, you can't sack it uh, because this ability will all resolve at once and you choose upon a resolution. Yep. So the first category of this deck is Flying Matters. Uh, we want almost every creature to have flying because this ability doesn't trigger if we attack with non-flyers. This is also like the perfect... Uh, we just thought it was like the perfect budget deck to do. It's new Jumpstart Commander. It's really cool. We both like it. It's one of our favorite ones. And Flying, there's a lot... You could actually do on a budget with this specific commander, so. Yeah, they've been printing a lot of Flying Matter stuff in the last few sets, so getting right into it, the first one is a rare for my core, actually. It's Sky Cat Sovereign. It's a blue and a white for a 1-1 one, one flyer. It gets plus one, plus one for each other creature you control with flying. You can pay two, a white, and a blue, and you can make a 1-1 one, one flying cat token thing. Is it a dinosaur or is it just a cat? It's not a dinosaur. Just a cat. Yeah, it's just a cat. It's just a flying cat. So Sky Cat Sovereign is... Essentially just a really big flyer really easily. It can also pump out flyers to great mana things. There's a lot of things to do with this card. Think of it like a two mana, five, five that can make, you're at least going to make one token because worst comes to worst, you're going to activate any as, oh, I'll just make a token. There it is. That's what I'm giving away. I don't have to lose any real cards. Yeah, exactly. You can give, you're giving away a one, one flying token compared to giving away like the sky cat, for example, is a lot worse or is a lot uh, better for you. Yeah, better for you. So the next two are very similar. They're Watcher of the Spheres. Blue, white for a 2-2 flyer from Core 21. Whenever another flying creature enters under your control, it gets plus one, plus one. And then your flying creatures cost one less to cast. That is also true of Warden of Evo's Isle, but that's just two in a blue for a 2-2 flyer. This is ramp. Yes, this is ramp. Uh, we can get a lot of flyers out easily. Just absolutely. I mean, a reduction of one on multiple cards is so good. I don't know if you've ever played like medallions, but if you play a medallion and you get like, it reduces two spells in a turn. It feels amazing. It's kind of like it taps for two mana. And then also has the other text. I mean, it taps for it taps for two mana and also can just keep tapping for mana if you have other stuff to do. Like it can just keep doing, like it's not like it just taps, it taps for two mana on that turn, but then like, let's just say you have a third spell. Now it taps for three mana. It can just tap for like up to five mana, depending on how like stormy your hand is. Yes, and next up, since we're going wide and we have flyers, we need Empyrean Eagle, Thunderclap, Wyvern, and Wingspan Mentor. So Empyrean Eagle and, Wy and Wyvern 
are the same thing. They're two, three flyers for three or four mana, respectively, and they give your other flying creatures plus one, plus one. The Wyvern has flash. But Wingspan Mentor is an awesome card from Ikoria because it's a two and a blue for a one, three human without flying. When it enters, you put a flying counter on something you control. That's not a human. That's everything. Then now that has flying, and then she pays two and a blue and tap, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control with flying. Um, yeah, these are lords. And the funny thing, Thunderclap just made me think of the stupid song Thunder. Thunder. Feel the thunder. That's the thunderclap. Oh, God. <laughs> that's what it made me think of. Yeah, these I are... think of like a sassy like clapback. Uh, I guess that's fair, too. You can also think of a clapback. Yeah, th- these are lords. That's simple. I mean, you want to make your flyers bigger to punch through their flyers. Flying is already evasion. It's nice to have. But sometimes in EDH, the air can get... Cl- the ground in a uh, two-player game can get clogged up pretty easily. The air tends not to. But in a four-player game EDH, the air can get pretty clogged up. I mean, so... This is a budget deck, and out of respect for the fact that this is a budget deck, these uh, lords probably aren't in a competitive deck. We have to actually resort to attacking most of the time when we want to win, so we have to pump our flyers to make going wide reasonable instead of just maybe the the best version of this deck where you spend $1,000 on it just goes, all right, make three spirits, attack, get the best thing, and now we're doing stuff with that. Well, here's the thing also about this. Uh, pumping your flyers to get through is awesome in... This deck doesn't just need to attack to win because you're going to be taking great things. Like, yeah, you can hit for like 10 in the air. Okay. And then the trigger, you can start pushing things around. If somebody, so you push, you get stuff from the guy on your left, right? Yeah. Okay. So if something, if there's something on the right you want, if you get three attacks off with the trigger, now that can come all the way around the table to you, which is plausible. It's not. It's asking a lot. It is asking a lot, but you're trying to do that in a deck like this. I mean, you got it. You want to do something like that. Just think of it like, as, as long as this commander survives, all the best things on the table are just going to make a spiral flushing motion towards you and then never pass your your uh, spot on the table. You're only passing poopy tokens. Yeah, we'll give away our cat tokens or other small stuff. I'm a mana sure. rock we don't need. Yeah, anything you don't need. Just any useless thing. That we, we're going to have useless flyers. There's going to be 1-1 one, one flyers that aren't very good that we can just say, get them out of here. Uh, next card. Uh, two ways to draw a card. We have Tide Skimmer, which is... Three and a blue for a two, three flyer. Whenever you attack with two or more flyers, you draw a card. So each turn you can get a nice little card draw out of Tide Skimmer. Um, and we have something a little better. Why don't you read Wind Reader Sphinx? Uh, Tide Skimmer on steroids. It's seven mana for a three, seven flyer. Whenever a creature with flying attacks, you draw a card. Yours, theirs. If you attack with four flyers, you draw four cards. If they attack with two flyers, you draw two cards. Tide Skimmer, very much a budget inclusion. This isn't like a competitive card. Drawing one a turn on an expensive flyer, eh, but it's pretty good in this deck. Yeah, especially with things that can reduce our flyers. And again, the, the nice thing about an ability like Tide Skimmer is it has haste again. It doesn't need to attack itself. You just need to play it and then have two flying attackers. Same with Wind Reader. We also have, God, there's so many new cards. Avon Gabo Master, three white white for a 4-3 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, you gain two life for each creature you control with flying. Just another flying matters payoff. Maybe you can help swing the race or just gain a couple life. This one's not super important. I just wanted to mention it. I mean, it's just, it's it synergizes with our flyers, which is what we want. We're going to gain life. This is not the, again, this is one of my first cuts. If we're going, if we're stretching to $100, this card's out of the deck. But we have $50 we got to work with we got. And we want synergies. And even Gaggle Master definitely gives us synergy. And it says Gaggle. It, that's true. I call it, uh, on stream, I call it the Google Gaggle Master. Okay. The uh, Safara <laughs> Sky's Blade is the last one. It's four white, white, white for a seven, seven flying and lifelink. You can pay white and tap four creatures of flying instead of uh, paying the seven mana that we just said for this thing. And it says other creatures you control with flying are indestructible. Oh, how's our commander going to survive a round around the table? Maybe it's indestructible. Uh, also, this costs one mana, and it's most of the time we're going to cast it, it's going to cost one mana, and your, your, whole, your whole team is indestructible. That's really good. And it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. And it's a 7-7 seven, seven flyer with lifelink. It has... This, this card is very good. It's one of the better cards in the deck, and it's only like a dollar? Four cents. It's nothing. Four, it's, it's a bulk rare. <laughs> I don't know if it's four cents. They cent. give you money to take this. Uh, anyway, those are the flyers. Keep in mind, we can make a lot of tokens. So that's just... Now you know that we, we're dominating the skies. I can't imagine a world where we don't have the most flyers, the only flyers, a million ways to get through. The best part about this deck is, A, we barely care about any of our attackers, except Ineas, and B... Flying is already evasion, so we don't have to throw, like, oh, Whisper Cloak in this deck or anything. 
Or, yeah, or even, like, Rancor. We don't need to trample over. We don't even need to be dealing combat damage, per se. Uh, we just need to be attacking. That's what's very... That's what, that is what is important in this deck, is the attacks themselves. What's the next? So next we have a little bit of ETB synergy. Blue-white, notorious for blinking. And I think when you're on a budget, uh, it's pretty easy to just throw... Hmm, sprinkle a little... Because there's flyers with ETBs. There's blue-white cards. It, it, just, it all works together. Read some. I'm blinking. That's so funny. I thought it was. Horrible. Oh my god! I'm pretty much just the funniest. Uh, so the we don't even have the things that do things first. We have the things that make stuff blink. Momentary blink is one in the white for an instant. Exile target creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under your control, or you can flash it back for three in a blue. I would say and and you can flash it back for three in a blue. That card's great. Even if you end up discarding it or it goes to the graveyard somehow, it's still two for two for one. Yeah, when they mill it, you get to go, what? Draw a card, idiot! We literally do stuff like that every time. <laughs> if someone makes me mill a card, I have to point out that you're an idiot and yeah. you suck. And if you, Or if you make me discard, discard a card, oh, it's like I didn't even discard anything! Yeah, I'll say, like, uh, your spell has no effect. <laughs> Just to be an idiot. Uh, that's idiot behavior. <laughs> the next one is a flyer. It's out. It's one white white. Its name is Flicker Wisp, and it's a 3-1 flyer. And when it enters the battlefield, exile target permanent until the beginning of the next end step, basically. And then it comes back. They can hit our opponent's stuff. They can hit our stuff. We can we can go, all right, attack with Inez, and then, like, blink Inez to untap it if we needed to block or something. Or attack with Inez, get the trigger, uh, push uh, something with an ETB to your right, and now flicker wisp it and bring it back to your side. Okay, that's awesome. That's really cool. You can even momentary blink flicker wisp at instant speed to save Inez from a board wipe. Yes. Uh, this card has a lot of applications. Fibble Thip, the Flicker Wisp. Uh, is a, Flicker Wisp is very good. It's been played in a lot of decks for a long time. I mean, I don't have to tell you how good this card is. Just play with it and you'll see yeah, we what got, it can do. we got plenty to get to. I'm going to read the next several very quickly because they're all <laughs> the same thing. This is the ETB, like bread and butter. These things come out and then we're probably going to give them away. Sky Scanner, Tome Raider, Cloud Seer, all just three mana X1s, ETB draw card, and they have flying. Elite Guard Mage. 2-3 for 4, draw a card, gain 3. Cloud Blazer, it's amazing. It's 5-mana 2-2, two, two, draw 2, gain 2. Mole Drifter, it's a 5-mana 2-2, two, two, draw 2. Or you can evoke it for 2 and a blue. Sphinx of Uthun is my favorite one, so I'm going to read this one. This is one of my favorite cards in Magic, and I don't know why. 5 blue blue for a 5-6 flyer. When enters the battlefield, Factor Fiction. Yep, so this goes with our blink theme. We're able to blink these things and reuse them. Also, uh, besides uh, Sphinx of Uthun... Uh, these are all things we're just willing to give away because just like, okay, I don't, well, I don't care about my Tome Raider. It's a one, one. I don't care about my sky scanner. It's a one, one. They're just, they're not important. They're irrelevant to us. Oh, it's so weird because it triggers on attacking. So if I attack you with three and you're on my right, I could give you a creature that's attacking you. Oh, wait, does it become not attacking? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's not doesn't impact this deck at all, but you can definitely do that. That is definitely a weird thing, and we can figure that out at another point. Cause I don't know. I'll be honest. I'm not sure how that ruling works. Ask so. a judge if that matters. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. If you're going to build this deck, just find out the rulings. Look up the rulings. Figure it out. Oh, here's a couple token makers. I'll let you read them all because they're very similar. Eldrazi Sky Spawner is two and a blue for a 2-1, and it makes a 1-1 one, one Cyan. Yes. Yeah, I can't remember if they're Cyan or Spawn. Cyan when it enters. Uh, hanged Executioner. Two and white for a 1-1 one, one Flyer. It enters, make a 1-1 one, one Spirit Token. And you can pay three and a white, exile Hanged Executioner, and exile another target creature. Whirler Rogue enters the battlefield and makes two 1-1 one, one Thopters. I don't care about the rest of its sex. It's not relevant. It is if you want to make your commander unblockable. That's just extra... What is it? Gravy? Gravy boat over there? Gravy. gravy? That's, yes. what the, that's what the kids say nowadays. I've heard I've heard the kids say that. Only because of us. Uh, <laughs> Geist Honored Monk is a star star whose power and toughness is equal to the number of creatures you control. And when it enters the battlefield, make two 1-1 one, one spirit tokens with flying. And it has vigilance, if you care at all about that. <laughs> we do. We kind of do. I, I mean, vigilance is pretty low on the uh, commander ability totem pole. I think that one's kind of nice with, like, Whirler Rogue if you just have a 10-10. It's like, all right, it's unblockable. Take 10. Yeah, 10, 10 is a lot of damage. Uh, and we are definitely we definitely make a lot of creatures. We have a lot of stupid dummies like Skyscanner and Tome Raider that are just going to be hanging around doing nothing. I was so happy that Whirler Rogue can go on this deck because it's so perfect. It makes two stupid expendable flyers. It has an ETB, and it literally helps push the only creature you care about, your commander, through. But we don't care about pushing your commander through. We just care that it doesn't die. 
We, if it has to attack, we just care that it doesn't die. Well, like, yeah. Probably it just sits there. I was just thinking it doesn't. It just almost never needs to attack. Right. Uh, not, and the last card is a really big blink thing. It's Yorion Sky Nomad. This is a 4-5 for 3 Azorius Hybrid. Azorius Hybrid. It's a flyer. Obviously, that's awesome for us. It when it enters the battlefield, exile any number of non-land permanents you control and own. And then return to the battlefield under your control. Can't even begin to stress like how much synergy this has. Flyer, ETB, and then it literally blinks all your other flyers with ETBs. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you did. T- <laughs> so you're like, I can't go into all the synergies, but two of them are the same exact thing. <laughs> and I just went into all of them. <laughs> also, you could hard swap this as the commander and the deck would still be really good. Yeah, but you wouldn't have the awesome. Uh, this deck would be, there'd be a lot of different cards. You would, well, yeah, I just mean like. Cards are really good. It works with everything we're trying to do. Oh, yeah. Yorian is awesome. I wish we could play it in our companion zone because we would have. So next, I just want to mention, since this is a budget deck, I'm sure the question will come up, well, how are we going to ramp and how are we going to answer threats? Yep. So we need we need ramp is relatively expensive in some slots. So we're going to go over the ways to make it cheaper. Uh, again, we talked, we, if you watched our video actually recently about Mana Rocks, we talked about we don't like most of the stuff we're putting in this deck because... We were talking about not in the budget. Now we're on a budget. We're going to talk about what we like because we are stuck to a budget. Right. So these cards become, they go from, we would never touch them because we don't have to. Now we just have to. So it, they're like, they're not bad cards. They're playable cards. You're just missing out when you have like objectively better things to do. Exactly. Uh, what's Stormscape Familiar? So it's a one and a blue for a 1-1 one, one flyer. And it says your white and black spells cost one less to cast. We only care about the white ones, but it's another... Basically, just a rampy flyer. Yeah, I mean, it's just useful. I mean, uh, it's it's a stupid flyer that's expendable, and we can easily just throw away when we don't need it. And on top of that, it's some ramp that we need. Uh, Burnished Heart. Uh, this is like a dollar now. It's a 2-2 two, two for three mana, and you can pay three, tap, and sacrifice it to go get two basics and put them onto the battlefield. Mirrored Landscape is a land. It enters the battlefield. Tap. It taps for colorless, and you can pay two, tap it, and sacrifice it to get two basics that share a type. And put them onto the battlefield tap. I don't know why it says share a type. It could just say like, the same they, name. They don't want you to get wastes. Oh. <laughs> I mean, maybe they don't want you to get wastes. I don't know. But that might be the first time we've ever read Burnished Heart on this channel. Yeah. We not- just, like, don't read that card. It, just, it doesn't even make the 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 deck tech because it's so bread and butter. But we get to talk about it because I'm actually excited to include it. And Mirror Landscape's like, 30 cents or something. So, Mir- slam dunk. Mirror Landscape, yeah, absolute super slam dunk Mirror Landscape in budget decks. Uh, why don't you read off some of the rocks? You can give a quick oversight if you want to. And I mean, like something like Azoria Signet, which is the first one. You don't really have to read. I think people know what Signets do. Yeah, so this Prismatic Lens just taps for a colorless two-mana rock. It's super budget, so we're happy to play it. Azoria Signet, Marble and Sky Diamond are just two-mana rocks and are tapped and produce either white or blue. One of them produces white, one of them produces blue. Commander Sphere, which we recently hated on in the non-budget section, but it's great here. It's three mana. Taps for one of any color of your commander's identity, and you can just sack it whenever to draw a card. Azorius Key Rune, which turns into a 2-2 flyer, so we put it in there for added bonus synergy. And then we'll just go ahead and read the last three. Uh, Azorius Locket is a three mana mana rock that taps for either a white or a blue, or you can pay four Azorius Hybrid and sacrifice it to draw two cards. Midnight Clock, one of my absolute favorite rocks ever printed, it immediately fo- which is, is going to be immediately followed by my actual favorite rock ever printed. Uh, Midnight Clock is a mana lift that so it comes it costs three mana comes in a test for a blue or you, you can pay two and a blue to put a midnight counter or no that's what bz said last time a clock hour some sort of counter on it. our counter and when it has 12 counters on it you get to sacrifice it uh or you get to exile it and then shuffle your library and draw a new seven but on each upkeep it gets a new counter so it goes off really fast each upkeep not just yours oh god that card's so good and the last one coveted jewel is a six mana artifact that taps for three mana. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you draw three cards. And whenever somebody attacks you with creatures, if one of them is unblocked, then they get control of Covered in Jewel, untap it, and draw three cards. This is the perfect uh, janky rock for us because we just mentioned we're like the don't care about combat damage tribal deck. <laughs> in the sense that, you know, if you take damage, we have to kill you. But we don't care if most of our creatures connect. Uh, well, if, if we play it, we draw three. Someone's going to take it from us. That's just how it works. Now we are going to untap and immediately get it back. It doesn't matter. We're going to have like six dumb flyers. How are they ever blocking six dumb flyers? If you 
care. This is a funny thing that I think. If you dislike control decks, okay, like say they're your least favorite thing in EDH, two things to put in your decks, the Monarchy and Coveted Jewel. Control decks can't get them because they don't have creatures. Yeah, yeah, I have... I have that stupid, we did an Emery deck tech, and I have that stupid thing, and whenever the Monarch is introduced, I'm like, I have like four creatures in this deck, and I they don't attack well at all, and I can never get it, so it really, it just like totally evens things up. Yeah, everyone's, everyone's getting card advantage except for the player with zero creatures. Which... Or Humble Defector, like the control deck's going to bully everybody, okay, Humble Defector's just going to sit here, and whoever's winning is not going to get it. Yeah, uh, Covered Jewel is awesome. Uh, like he said, we have flyers. There's always going to be an unblocked flyer. How often is there not, how often can there be a non unblocked flyer? I just realized how much you can mess up combat with any ass. You, <laughs> you can attack somebody and they're one, attack somebody, they have one big flyer to block it and just move that flyer over so it can't block. Like, and no. no. So you're taking all the damage. Thank you. <laughs> but my one attacker is now over here and we don't know if that's attacking. <laughs> all right, so on to. <clears throat> <laughs> and to removal, uh, we have two board wipes in the deck. Tragic Arrogance, one of our favorite board wipes in all of EDH, is actually very budget, which somebody changed that. I mean, I don't want it to. I don't really care if it changes. But who's not playing this card? This card's amazing. It is three white white for a board wipe, and it says for each opponent, it, it, for each player, because it counts you two, you pick an artifact, an enchantment, a creature, a planeswalker, and they keep those ones, and then they sacrifice the rest of, the, of those. It's so good. It's just like any is. They're not choosing. No, no, no. I'm choosing. I get to make the choice. I keep my best things. Like I said, probably just any a mana rock, and then like we have like two enchantments in this deck. So some of those, and then, oh, you guys get all your 1-1 one, one dorks. You can have Llanowar Elves and lose everything else. Oh, keep your Mind Stone, but you lose the Great Henge. Stuff like that. Like, I absolutely understand that there are situations where this card's not, like, ideal like it's like oh, okay they have a, only one creature and it's foreign class obviously tragic arrogance doesn't deal with that dude i was thinking the exact same thing <laughs> really <Yeah. laughs> like if you had just stopped i would have mentioned that exact example <laughs> it's pretty funny uh but it's not good in that situation but it's good in so many other situations and it's such a blowout like everybody's keeping their worst stuff and you're keeping your best stuff this is so much better than the board wipe that just clears everything such a high percentage of the time. Well, let me talk about in this deck, Tragic Arrogance basically has no downside because if you are going to wipe the board, you attack with creatures that are going to die anyway. And then if somebody just has a Vorinclex, but the person next to them has a dumb spear token, you move it over and then you cast Tragic Arrogance and ruin everyone's day. That's really good. I actually didn't even think about like, that. That fixes all your problems. There's yeah. no way. Like what board states where every, all your opponents have a Vorinclex and nothing else? <laughs> Is that the board? <laughs> I mean, you would still be able to get rid of two of the Vorinclex, and you'd get one. Our next board wipe is Cleansing Nova, which is a modal spell. You can choose to either wipe all the creatures off the field for five mana, or for five mana, you can choose to wipe all artifacts and enchantments. It's nice to have a mode here. If you're winning on board, you take out other fluff, and if you're losing on board, there is no board. Fluff. So that's got to be good to me, right? Like, well, okay, well, I'm winning on board. How are you guys going to catch up? Probably your mana rocks and your dumb ristic study enchantments. I'm going to get rid of them. I just looked at I, I don't know why. I just thought the word fluff was a was a great choice of words. It made me smile. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> What's, what, what are some of like, we have two spot removal spells next. Uh, the first one is Reality Shift, which is still a budget card. It's very good. It's one in a blue exile target creature. Then its controller manifests the top card of its library. Yeah. Yeah. Of his, his or her. I don't know why I said it's. Of their library. I believe that's how cards are worded now. And the other one is a budget card from M21 and it is Angelic Ascension, which is one of the white exile terror creature. Its controller gets a 4 4 angel. This is good in our deck because it's modal. We can uh, say they're going to like spot remove something. We can turn whatever they're going to spot remove into a 4 4 flyer. Or alternatively, we can turn something that's not flying on our side into a flyer. Or there's a Vorinclex on the board and a 4 4 angel just doesn't seem that bad anymore. Yeah, I I, uh, I like this card better than Path to Exile. I really don't want to give them a land, but I'll give them basically any stupid vanilla token. And also, if a 4-4 four Angel is really that big of a deal, we can always just take it. Yeah. You can often... Um, oh, man. it. I'll tell you right now, I would never want to sit to the left of this deck. That's, there, we've talked about that, where there are certain decks that you... They're like We find it frustrating that the order in which you sit matters for certain decks. This is this, this is definitely one of them. Oh, one hundred in ten percent is one of them. Sitting to the left, you basically if they have three attackers on board, you can't play out big giant threats, and that kind of sucks, especially if that's your game plan. You lose all your best stuff. 
If you're playing, yeah, if you're playing a Xenagos deck, for example, like that sucks. It's like your whole game plan is to play big, stupid, beefy guys in the tech, and now to your right is an inning ass player. So every time you play one of those guys, they take it. No, it's like, no, you play Xenagos, then they take it, and you can never get it back because it's indestructible, and you're playing red green. Feels bad. That's man. a feel bad. But we're not here to we're not here to make our opponents feel good. We're here to make, their, make ourselves feel good. We got to get that dopamine. <laughs> well, there's a couple other ways to get dopamine: crush contraband, three and a white for a two for one. You can exile an artifact and or an enchantment. Stolen by the Fae is a janky budget include that we thought was cool. It's X blue blue. Bounce a creature with mana cost X, but you make X fairies with flying. So if we bounce a four drop, this costs six mana and we get four flyers. Yes, the flyers are what is important and what makes this card playable. Obviously, uh, I don't really want to... What's the... What's repeal? I don't want to play repeal in my deck. But if I'm getting fairies that can give me some sort of advantage, just, just imagine you have... Uh, what's the flyer? The legendary... Uh, or the sphinx? Oh, the the three seven that yeah. one yeah that's not legendary oh just imagine you have that the three seven sphinx and you stolen by the fey pass and then on your turn you play that sphinx and attack for like with seven guys and draw seven cards like dang you just take the best thing whatever the well not the best thing you want to bounce the biggest thing if you just have mana to spare obviously there's some tempo advantages to just oh this creature needs to stay out or like they just played a shield dread well it's like i'll time walk you okay and then make seven fairies uh, last couple ones, we need counter spells. This is blue and budget, so counter spells are like at such a premium. We found there's really good ones. We have negate, one in a blue, counter non creature spell, disdainful stroke, one in a blue, counter spell, mana cost four greater, and then Dovin's veto, blue and a white, can't be countered, counter a non creature spell. Yeah, these are all obviously, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Counter spells? <laughs> that, that's true. They are all obviously counter spells. I. They they only counter certain things is what I meant to say. Dovin's veto in the gate obviously only hit non creature spells and uh, the Snaffle Stroke is only CMC over four. So like they they're not the best counter spells in the world, but they do do a lot. Um, <laughs> I said do do. Well, just look at it like this deck hates board wipes. We don't want to have to start over even if we can do it quickly. We want to just beat people down and kill them in the air. So we want. All our counter spells need to counter board wipes. Well, negate and disdainful stroke. That's all they're gonna. That's just you just sit and wait. You just sit and wait for when they try to stop you from being ahead, and you just wipe it off and get rid of it. And then vetoes the same way. So <laughs> I just thought busy because I was thinking, do we put counter spell in this stuff? It turns out counter spell is not that budget. It's like two dollars. It's been printed eighty five times, more than most cards in Magic, and it's it's still up there. So we're gonna move on to winning the game. We have to have you know maybe. Slightly more than just attack you to win. I hate when you're just like, hope my combat step goes well. I mean, the, the thing is, I mentioned this earlier, is that we don't have to rely on that too much because taking other people's best permanents, barring the super combo decks and a couple other, there's obviously some other examples that aren't permanent based decks. Um, we're going to have the best stuff. We're absolutely going to have the best stuff. And also, I will say, the nitpicking nerd special is just we always have other ways to win. We always have like at least three. So the first way to win is actually an infinite combo. Yeah, we still have infinite combos in budget decks. It's a colorless land, which I bet you weren't expecting to be the first card. Eldrazi Displacer, two and a white for a 3-3 three, three that flickers something for two and a colorless. So it flickers it right away, tapped. And Pergan Drake, that awesome common that costs like 23 cents. It's four and a blue for a 2-3. When it enters the battlefield, you untap five target lands. So we untap our colorless land, pocket two mana, and then make infinite blue and white mana with Eldrazi Displacer plus Paragon Drake. So now that we have infinite mana, if you don't already have a way to take advantage of that, just add another colorless land. Now you bank infinite colorless mana, and you have infinite blinks. And do you know of any cards that might work with that? Well, we mentioned earlier we have a ton of cards that draw when they enter. One of them being like Tome Raider, which is three mana and one edge to the battlefield. You draw a card. So if you blink that infinite times, you just draw your whole deck. Now, if we have our whole deck, we actually do need a way to pretty much put this game away, which we can play everything out. But is that going to win us the game? No, unless we do something like Rift Wing Cloudscape, which is a five mana two two. When it enters the battlefield, return target permanent permanent. Yes, to its owner's hand. It also has suspend for one and a blue. It also has flying. So it is. It has that synergy of being a flyer in this deck. So if we fl flicker this infinite times, we can bounce every permanent we don't control. So uh, yeah, is that good? I mean, that, that, the game's over. That's the win. That's the win. That's absolutely a win. And you also don't run out of combo here. 
Like, so you end your turn with your lands untapped. Oh, jeez. So if they want to try and, like, play it out, and then they play a land, you go, okay, uh, bounce it. As soon as I get priority, the land's back to your hand. Oh, you played a creature. Well, as soon as I have priority, it's actually back to your hand. <laughs> so yeah. there's no point in trying for them. Yeah, there's no point in trying. I don't know what they would need, but I don't think it exists. Yeah, really, at that point, it doesn't doesn't exist. Uh, so we can move on to maybe more of the, like, now we can move on to attacking, but these are way more reliable ways to actually win when you're attacking. For, it's extra turn spells. Uh, first one, these are budget, so they're not good. Karn's Temporal Sundering is four blue blue for sorcery. You need to control your commander, basically, or a legendary creature, and you bounce it on them permanent, and then you time walk. Take another turn after this one. Part the Water Veil, six mana, time walk. Both of these things exile themselves after they resolve. Uh, you can awaken it to make a 9-9 land. That's never going to happen. I don't... Who cares? Uh, and then Metami the Ageless is a Sphinx with flying. So much synergy. Can't attack during extra turns, but if it hits somebody, the one time we actually care about combat damage, you get an extra turn. Uh, BZ, you fool. Part of the Water Veil only makes a 6-6 land. A cost 9? Is that what I'm thinking of? Mm-hmm. Mm, I've made a terrible error. It's now even worse than what I read. It might make a 4-4 land. I don't even know. It's not a 4-4. Four four. That's here. That's the, the ruinous path. I'm just being dumb. I don't know. It makes it makes a land to do a creature, basically. It makes I was, a 0-0, zero, zero because if you want to do that, you deserve to suffer. <laughs> your punishment is your land gets destroyed. It, it'll be relevant one out of a thousand games about. No, because if you... Um, does, can't you fizzle the spell if you target a land? So just don't do it. Well, I mean, they have to have... If, if you do it in a strip mine, you're an idiot. Well, yeah, but I mean, what if they like Venser shapers of on you, like something you didn't see coming? Well, that's hilarious. I just you don't you don't need this is so relevant. <laughs> How about what do these extra turn spells do for our deck? Uh, they let us do Inez triggers again. So we attack, we get the triggers, and then we take an extra turn. So Inez just triggers twice. So it means we're getting lots and lots and lots. We're getting all the best stuff at the table. We're building up such a huge board. And then we're going to counter their spell when they try and work the boy. <laughs> then we have negate for when they try to get their stuff back. No, 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 no. Sorry, guy on my left. Uh, sit somewhere else next game because I'm not changing decks. <laughs> sit, sit somewhere else next game. <laughs> switch with switch with Freddy over there. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure Freddy will be happy to sit next to Inez. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Inez. <laughs> okay, there's only one more. Uh, it's Archetype of Imagination. I just put it on here because it says your creatures are unblockable. It's a six mana, three, two. All your guys have flying. None of theirs have flying. All your creatures get buffed by Inez. They can't possibly be blocked, except by creatures with reach. I literally can't name one good creature with reach in Commander. Okay. So one funny thing about a card like this. Be careful. Uh, if you would get completely destroyed by attacking somebody, if say so say your attack would be awful without this card on the field, don't make that attack. Because all it takes is a Swords to Plowshare on this creature specifically, and then they get to make all the blocks they wanted to make, and you go, oh. Oopsie. Yeah, what if they like if they played and treat the angels and they have four or five angels? Don't just go Ugh, get you. Can't do anything and they just you know wreck your life. I Drink the, responsibly with this card. I I like the idea of uh all the angels walking around on the ground. Like we have wings, but we can't really fly. Right? No, they don't have imagination anymore. <laughs> I just I just can't picture how I would be up there when I'm down here. It just doesn't work. Huh. I don't know what that is. That's crazy. I was just thinking, though, uh, if you do end up drawing your whole deck with infinite blinks, you do have infinite life with Gaggle Master. <laughs> so take that. You thought it was just another include. It's the best card in the whole deck. There's probably something else hidden within the realms of this deck that we're not thinking of that would win us the game. It's tough because when you have infinite mana and infinite blinks, it's like, well, how are you not winning? Yeah, how do you not win? Like, just in case you need the... 100% win, then there's Cloudscape for you. But that's that's how we win the game. That was a deck. This is really long. We did we covered like 52, 54 cards, mm -hmm. something like that. So we're going to do shout-outs now. Yeah, special shout-outs to all of our patrons. We love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. If you would like to join our patrons and become a poopy baby and join our Discord, you can follow the link in the description below. That link will take you to patreon.com. You can join one of our awesome tiers. There's lots of sweet perks. Uh, we're getting new pins made with our new logo. That's pretty exciting. Uh, we're also we have a new logo. I love the new logo. Me too. It's I I didn't think it would be that much cooler. It's like ten times cooler. Uh, also, let's see. You can go to tcgplayer.com. The link for this awesome budget deck list is in the description. You can try me if you don't think it's fifty dollars yet. But I will say, timestamp. This is um, the twenty sixth of July. So if it's like the next month, probably all the cards spiked because they saw this deck. Wait, did we take out time wipe from this deck? Time wipe? Yeah. 
Okay, I remember time, we had an issue with Time Wipe where we couldn't figure out how to make it the, not the promo version. Yeah, I, when I realized Tragic Arrogance we could just play instead, I'm like, oh, okay, bye. Yeah, get, get out of your Time Wipe. Yeah, so that, that, that's uh, anything else you want to mention? Streaming? Twitch, maybe? Uh, yeah, if you can't get enough of me and sometimes never be easy, uh, I stream on Twitch weekdays from 10 to 4. Uh, I play a lot of Arena, well, mostly limited. And I will jump in and finish what I was saying because I never did. If you go to the deck list and then navigate where you want. <laughs> And buy cards you want. We get a kickback on the order. Do that. That's the most important part. Yeah, yeah. We we it helps support the channel, and that's the best way to support the channel. If you if you can't give us money directly, and you but you want to buy magic cards and you want to support the channel, that's the best way to do it. Tidbit about our lives. We're decorating the shelves, like as requested, but we were going to do that anyway. And we've got a little something something starting up over there. Can you guys figure out what these like? What do these have in common? What I'm trying not to like give. And why are they up there? Uh, okay, I can answer that right now. They're plushies, and they're decorating the shelves. Yep, and they're from video games. Yes, so that's it. Um, we're going to leave you guys. Sorry. Why are they there? Let us know if you like the budget deck tech. Tell us in the comments why they're there. Peace out, Tribe Scout.